Did you guys get to see the halftime Super Bowl? And did you notice that the Tampa Bay uh, used a ship for their logo? And the uh, Super Bowl logo was the L1V with a football on top of it. This is what I see when I look at it. I see an obelisk with a Vesca Pisces football on top. And in Roman numerals, the L is 50, which would be in Dramatri, you take the zero out, would be a five. And the V would also be a five. So we have a five, one, five, which adds to 11. So we're back to our Elven Elementals Elohim uh, theme with this uh, logo. If you're new to my channel, I tend to not repeat everything, but the Karina ship is a huge part of this. This is a constellation that's in the sky that actually the inauguration was all aligned to with the swearing in star in that ship. And the ship Karina is what the ventilators for Corona, there's a company named after them. And there's also a Karina in your bladder and a Karina in your trachea that divides the left and right with a wall. Okay, so it's all, the esoteric knowledge uh, is kind of woven through science, hence why the Royal Academy of Science uses esoteric symbols on their periodic table. Also, the wording of species, uh, there's esoteric knowledge in there that's all leading back to the constellations. So this is kind of what my channel is all about. And um, I'm just kind of decoding reality so we can see how the matrix is an illusion in a way that's following a script uh, with repetitive history relooping and also tying into really ancient religions and their beliefs, which all worship the sky. So this is what my channel is about. And I'm happy if you're here and you're new. And I'm just decoding reality with these um, astro theology themes so that we can see really the script and also kind of see the illusion and then in a way um, almost um, predict what's going to come down the tubes for us and how it relates to alchemy and esoteric knowledge. Now I, I look at everything. I look at the left, I look at the right, I look at the 17th letter movement. Uh, I look at everything. I look at all religions. I look at geometry. I look at um, uh, just shapes, uh, symbols rule the world. You know, Confucius said this and uh, the symbols all relate to the sky. So when I looked at this logo of the, um, uh, of the Super Bowl and we saw a 5-5, five five, I just, my brain instantly goes, oh, what's the opposite? What's the mirror of 5? It's 2. Okay, so this was all in the 17th letter post. Okay, so um, when I look at this and then I took the five and the two and then I merged it over, we get the eight, which the eight is the Mobius strip. It's also the, um, the pattern that the sun makes in the sky. Okay, the infinity symbol. Now, if you take the eight and you split it in two, as above, so below, you get two phi symbols. So we're back to golden ratio. So this is how esoteric uh, knowledge kind of works. You have to think uh, way expanded compared to um, our education system. Our education system doesn't teach us to think like this. They, they, everything is compartmentalized and they don't um, show that everything is interrelated. And like all knowledge is one knowledge. So it's really how you see things in perception. But this is just my little way of looking at this uh, Super Bowl logo. And I know it's not just me, you know, that thinks like this because the Mad Magazine um, had the year um, 1961, which they have March in there, which is a three as well. So they had the 369 and they called it the upside down year. It's because the numbers, if you flip it, can, you know, look the same. So, but they took the 369 in there because we know this uh, all ties into Uranus, the uh, heaven uh, planet. Um, its synodic uh, orbit is 369. It also ties in to the um, candent houses on astrology. And I will get into that. I'm not going to get into that today, but there's th those houses... Uh, are three six nine twelve okay so it's the mutable cross basically and um, 
yeah, so anyhow, it's not just me that looks at things upside down. We're in the upside down world and the esoteric, um, knowledgeable people do look at numbers in this format. Now, of course, the weekend came out. The weekend, well, what's the weekend? It's Saturday and Sunday, so it's Saturn and the sun. Um, and he came out with Starboy as his first song. And then, you know, do you feel it coming? You need to go look at these videos, even if you think they're satanic or whatever. Um, the do you feel it coming is a very good one because at the end, you know, there's the Medusa frozen, well, stone statue. There's also alien beings coming uh, at the end. So th these are good kind of uh, precursors to show what's coming down the tubes for our reality. Um, even if you don't believe in all that, uh, I do suggest that you start to open up your mind um, and start to see that the mutable cross is, is really the enemy in a way where they're trying to get us to accept AI, which is really having to do with um, extraterrestrial beings uh, wanting to take over. Okay, so the cardinal cross is really the omnipresent cross. It's really the high cross. Um, and it's ruled by Capricorn and Cancer, Mars, and uh, Libra, okay? And I'm going to get into um, this new song, um, Chemtrails Over the Country Club by Lana Del Rey. Um, somebody, one of my subs uh, mentioned it to me last night, and I was right in the middle of putting this whole moon-sun video together, and I thought, oh, this is a perfect segue into all of this. So I'm going to go into that, uh, all her video and I took a lot of screenshots because the, the shots are coming at you really fast and if you don't see them and understand what they mean you're just going to oh it's just part of the video but I'm going to break it all down so this part of the Super Bowl you know was basically the walking dead it's the mutable cross and then the moon was there as well um, which is really relevant to the cardinal cross because cancer is on uh, its proper placement on the moon pillar it's the only constellation ruled by the moon, Cancer. I've meditated a lot on the moon. I find it really bizarre that we only see one side of it and it never turns. Um, thought about this a lot since I was a kid. And also the fact that it's the exact distance from where we're standing on Earth to the sun that creates the, you know, the perfect ellipse to create the, um, the corona. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't really think it's um, a natural thing that's in the sky. That's just my personal opinion. I know Dan Winters agrees with me on this, and I'm going to drop a Dan Winters Leak Project video that he was invited to go on Leak Project. I was really impressed that uh, Rex had him on there. So that is great. It's starting to get more mainstream, and he did talk about the ET uh, war. Okay, so now this little thing that I found where this rabbit, you know, follow the white rabbit. You don't want to follow the white rabbit. He's mixing the elixir of life, which I do believe is phosphorus coming from, well, you go figure out where phosphorus comes from. Um, it's actually urine. Um, and I do believe they're creating the elixir of life up on the moon. Okay. And this is an ancient symbol that I found kind of confirming that. So the, everything in this realm is bipolar. So the moon um, also has references to memory because it's tied to the tides of the ocean. It's, it's a water symbol. It's the water symbol. Um, and it, so it's referencing to memory. It's also referencing to us um, being rooted into the ground to find our memories um, and connect our DNA back into the earth. So it has a really good aspect to it. But I do think it also represents the ship, okay? So I don't think it's actually, um, you know, like Dan Winter says, it rings when you hit it, okay? So, <laughs> you know, what are they doing there? Um, is, you know, it's, it's probably has something totally to do with the relooping of souls. This is what I think. So um, I'm just going to put that out there. And I know a lot of people will find that really bizarre, but um, I think we need to start talking about these things because the symbolism is definitely coming at us like full, full, uh, full on. And very cool that a, a mainstream artist is producing a song with the chemtrails in the title. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, all part of the awakening process. So I'm going to walk you through the song. Of course, she has her mask on, but it's like a decorative mask. And she's in this car um, and she's driving as if she's just going to the country club. 
what I notice in a lot of videos, the car repre represents Karina. Okay, it represents the the ability to be taken up in this kind of chariot. Okay, so this is really they use this a lot. She looks for the radio station and she stops on the number 23, which has to do with DNA. This is all about DNA and what we're living right now with the coronavirus and the vaccine. DNA from top down um, and as it spirals looks like a pentagon. Okay, so um, this is really important why they use the number five all the time. And it also ties into the rose because it looks like a rose and the rose was in the video. And then this also ties into Venus because Venus and Earth makes this Rosabella and Venus would be the harvesting planet, kind of like the women coming back to harvest from the Pleiades. And I think this is all to do with, yes, it all to do with love. It all depends on which path you take. If you see the symbol as evil or you see the symbol as, as positive. But each symbol has a bipolar representation of it. She's just sitting there uh, painting a picture of the moon. And she says, my moon is in Leo and my cancer in sun. Okay, so that's not a normal way you would say that. You wouldn't, you'd say my son's in cancer. Okay, so she's starting to reference how the sun and the moon are, you know, linked. Which are, the, they're the two pillars, right? It's Leo and Cancer. Cancer is the only constellation ruled by the moon, and Leo is the only constellation ruled by the sun. So I've explained this before. We have the mutable cross where Jupiter, Jupiter, two constellations, Pisces and Sagittarius, rule that cross. It's very mirrored-like cross, okay? Um, Pisces, uh, fixed cross, sorry, is the cross that's collapsing. It's male dominant, sun pillar dominant, you know, um, I enjoy, I love to enjoy. This cross is, to me, is collapsing. It's gone. Okay, cardinal cross um, will be more intuition and all to do with um, I am to feel, which would be the two mantras for Mars and um, the moon is I feel. You, you have emotions, right? Intuition. Now, she also mentions um, you're in Capricorn and I'm in Cancer. So she's talking about the feminine access of the cardinal cross. So feminine accesses of cardinal cross would be Saturn and the moon. Now, I'm, I will do another video on this, but I found um, they had created a, the phi of the, um, of the calendar. And uh, when I started to look into this, I started to map it. And I noticed that the, the phi of the calendar was going towards a Saturn moon conjunction. Okay, actually on the tail of the whale. So I will do another video on that. But the Saturn moon is very, very important to all the esoteric knowledge. And I do believe it's because of the, the two equinoxes, right? Um, and I'll show you that on a different format here. Now, this would be the summer months where we have, you know, the summer uh, solstice, June 21st, which is in Cancer, okay? And then um, December 21st, winter solstice, which is in Capricorn. And this is called, you can't really see it, it's coming into view here, it's called the Tropic of Cancer at the top, and then the Tropic of, of Capricorn at the bottom. And you can start to see how the, the sun, you know, this is summer and winter, and it's like a... a sine wave, right? Um, so we start to see how this all interacts with everything, okay? So this is why she's referencing this. Now somebody sent me this, is I.U. Tom. Uh, he's an astrologer, but a Native American astrologer it sounds like. Um, and he's explaining how the spine is, you know, really bet the two, between the two pillars. This would be your narrow path. And this all ties into the Kabbalah tree, which I will get into. Um, but you can see how he's separated where the lunar houses are on one side and the solar sun houses are on the other. So this is all, again, um, referencing, you know, the summer and the winter. But the winter, they have it as the sun, and then the summer is as the moon. So it's kind of weird. Everything switches, right? So she's at her country club with the um, striped ball, um, which has reference later in the video. But the, the swan. Okay, the swan is Cygnus, which is the northern cross. Um, and this is, you know, the, the cross of Jesus uh, representation. Okay, 
Okay, so she's driving in her red Mercedes, her antique Mercedes. Now, the Mercedes symbol looks like the peace symbol, right? That's what they always say it looks like. But I bet you didn't know that it's the alchemic symbol for phosphoric acid. So we're back to phosphorus again. It's the friggin' peace symbol. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my god. But then it ties back into the triskelin. Okay, so you can see this is all to do with Odin and the Tree of Life. So for sure, it's phosphorus, right? Because everything's about phosphorus, right? It's like, I think this is the nectar of the gods, okay? There's DNA, you know, phosphorus uh, activates DNA, so it's psychokinetic. And I was listening to Dan Winters on this Leap Project video, and he was saying that the Pleiadians have lost their ability to be psychokinetic and do soul transfer through the natural way. They're doing it through the mechanical way. So because of that, they need human psychokinetic DNA so that they can continue, um, you know, on their path. Okay, so, but they're using us. We're a farm. We are big farm. Ha. Ah. I love it when you guys send me stuff. Somebody else sent me this. Um, and there was the Las Vegas shooting hotel. And there's the Triskelin again. Okay, so it's like, oh my God. You know, this is all done representing this whole day of the rapture and the whole biblical text it's all intertwined in the whole matrix or you can just convince yourself it's all a coincidence now there's a young girl in her video and of course she's putting makeup on or playing brushing her hair or whatever and she looks in the mirror and this is the representation for cassiopeia cassiopeia is um, andromeda's mother uh, she's the queen of heaven but also Venus has a uh, symbolism to uh, the mirror because they used to watch Venus um, bef when she comes in front of the sun uh, with these, they called them frying pans and they'd fill them with water and they would do a reflection to see when Venus was in front of the sun and then she goes nine months and then she goes behind the sun and another nine months. So that's why she's the woman planet. But the whole mirror is all about the queen of heaven. Well, in constellation, that would be Cassiopeia. And then in planets, that would be Venus. Water is also associated with portals. Okay, so this it's like it's like going through the veil. Okay, so they, they show, of course, the, the aerial view of the pool looking like a mirror. The spinning striped ball to me is just representation of the world, like we're on this big spinning ball. There she is with the girl, you can hardly see her face, but they're looking at a bag with water in it with a fish in it so it's like you know we're we're the fish in the fish bowl right we, we have to break through the glass ceiling to get out of here the dome they also show the dove okay the dove uh, you know can be a little bit libra but also it's um columbia okay so back in 1592 listed columbia the dove with the olive branch. Okay, so this is the representation of freedom, the, the white dove. But, you know, it's in the cage, but when the dove flies, then it's freedom. They did this at the Olympics. I, I can't remember if it was the 1976 Olympics. Oh, it was a long time ago. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think they did a whole bunch of doves uh, on, on that Olympic uh, ceremony as well, releasing the doves. So here you can see Columba with the olive branch and then Libra sometimes having wings um, can also be the dove, but usually it's more to do with balance. Ten sections in a lemon and later in the video it gets squeezed. Okay, ten, one, zero. The car starts spinning out of control and lifting up off the ground. So there's the chariot and then uh, it goes up to the moon. It looks like to me it was the moon and you can see the you know Kansas you know the tornado um, Wizard of Oz the car spinning up into the vortex the little girl starts to spin in her room everything starts to spin it's like the timeline start to kind of melt and kind of you know slow down it's kind of like this vortex happening and you can see this vortex has to do here with like wormholes right so then we get the seven kind of, well, I don't know if there's seven, I think there's five, but 
you know, in this picture, there's seven, uh, and they start to look like vampires and, um, you know, the wolf comes. So I'm going to go into this, you know, then you can say, oh my God, it's satanic, but it's actually goes right back to Egyptian, um, mythology. And I will explain that I had written, read a book about the wolf and what it represents and it has a lot to do with this rebirth but I'm going to go into all that. So then the car gets put on fire you know it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes and the white wolf is there the whole time. She actually starts to turn into a wolf and starts to transform and this is all to do with shape-shifting and yeah this is all in Egyptian mythology as well or Native American mythology. And there she is just with the white wolf. It's always the white wolf. Hard to find this stuff on the internet. I had bought this book called The White Spirit Animals, Prophet of Change. Prophets of Change, sorry. And um, they're talking here about the Egyptian based their archaeological cycles on the star's helical rising. This is about Sirius, or the day of which Sirius is vis visible just before sunrise. This would be in the summer, right? Because it's called the dog star, you know, the uh, dog days of summer, right? The star's rising is connected to the flooding of the Nile, and it first appears near the summer solstice. So there we go, we get cancer again. Sirius was also thought to cause certain uh, symptoms in humans, including the seasonal weakening of men and the arousal of women. Um, in the Iliad, Sirius rises with the sun and is attributed cause to sultry summer days, hence the reference to the dog days of summer. Yeah. Sirius is called a sorcerer or described as glowing in Greek when wolf's vestige is seen in fires by people gathered around to cook for the warmth, it appears as a magical helper, a mysterious shapeshifter who comes to humans when we need guidance. Wolf is a traveling protector of the great spirit, working with, um, is legend has it, brother sister, bear as guardian of the north. Now here it's saying, oh, it's hard for me to read, hang on. Um, yeah, they're talking about the Native American, uh, the Sir called Sirius the dog face, um, and it's entrees. Entrees would be um, the fixed star in Scorpio, okay? But it's also Sirius. So the ancient Chinese astrologers gave Sirius the name the wolf star, as opposed to the dog star. It's called the dog star now, but it's really the wolf star. The, and refer to um, the actual southern sky wolf constellation Lupus as the Azure Dragon. Uh, yeah, so the Chinese say, you know, the Lupus is really the Azure Dragon, not, um, not the real wolf, okay? The Dogon tribe of Mali believes that their ancestrals came from the system Sirius. And Dan Winters talks about this. The Sirius is to do with Orion, right? And it's two vortexes. Um, and it also all ties into Osiris. And this is what I'm saying. This video is a segue to, I want to get into Osiris and how that all um, interacts with the United States. Okay? And all to do with Freemasonry. The wolf star Sirius is considered to be the place from which elder wisdoms for the earth is divert. Sirius is uh, twice the size of our sun and 20 times brighter. Some say that its name um, comes from the fact that it is the constellation of Can Canis Major, which is the ancient Egyptians is called Suthis and is associated with Isis, the female mother goddess. Osiris, as a Isis's partner is associated with Orion, yeah. The very star system with which white spirit lion is associated. Okay, so Orion is the white lion, but Sirius is the white wolf. Okay, so these are just things you got to keep in your memory. Some Egyptians note that while Orion's star system filters its light 
into the king's chamber at the Great Pyramid at Giza, at Giza on the summer solstice. It is the star system Sirius whose light illuminates the south shaft of the queen's chamber. So, so see, the wolf is the queen and the king's chamber is the lion. I like the notion that uh, the white lion is the male guardian and the wolf is the female guardian. guardian. Yeah, and so they're the alpha pair. And both function as earthly timekeeping signatories in the sky. So see, it's just, it's like they're, these, some, these um, prophetic uh, white spirit animals are showing us change is coming. Okay, so this is why she's using this all in her video. Now, the one thing I got out of this book, um, and it's just easier for me to read it in this format, um, is that Anubis, okay, as a result, Anubis is often referred to as having a jackal head. But the jackal is now more probably called a wolf, okay? So this Egyptian god has a wolf head. It's not a jackal head. Like many ancient Egyptian deities, Anubis assumes uh, different roles in various contexts, depicting as a protector of graves as early as the first dynasty. Anubis was uh, also the embalmer, and by the Middle Kingdom, he was replaced by Osiris. So the wolf ties to Osiris. It goes back to Orion, right? In his uh, role as the lord of the underworld. One of the prominent roles was the god who ushered souls into the afterlife. Okay, so he's not all, all bad, right? He helps you get into the afterlife, which is to Shambhala. Now, I'm going to do a video how this all ties into Washington. But I want you guys, you can go do the research. I'm not going to put it in here. I'll put it in my next video. That when Trump was inaugurated, he was in the beast car. And the car stopped for, I don't know, a minute or so. And they waited till Sirius came on the helical rising to start the car going forward again. Okay, so this is all referencing to this time of uh, prophet prophetic change happening. And I think Trump really has an association with Osiris, okay? And I'm going to do a whole video on that, but this is the segue into all that. Now, Osiris, also called Usur, Usur, <laughs> when you say Sir, right? One of the most important gods of ancient Egypt. The original, the origin of Osiris is obscure. He was a local god of Bursiris in lower Egypt and may have been a personification of Chthonic underworld fertility. Okay, so by about 24,000 BC, however, Osiris clearly played a double role. He was both a god of fertility and the embodiment of the dead and resurrected king. This dual role was in turn combined with the Egyptian concept of divine kingship. The king of death became Osiris, god of the underworld. And the dead king's son, the living king, was identified with Horus, a god of the sky. Osiris and Horus were thus father and son. The goddess Isis was the mother of the king and thus the mother of Horus and the consult of, you know, of Osiris. So she put Osiris all back together again, made him a magic potion for his uh, penis, and then she got impregnated and had Horus. This is the thing. You know, it's like the, the mythology. The god Seth was considered the, the murderer of Osiris and adversary of Horus. And this is why Don Jr. Trump said, oh, my dad's a, the Lion King and, you know, uh, was it Seth, the, the, the uncle lion killed, you know, sacrificed my dad, okay? So they're already starting to show the symbolism, but this is all going back, not just to the Lion King being the fixed cross, but all back to Egyptian uh, mythology. Yeah, so Don Jr. was saying that Biden sacrificed Trump at the election. Now, this symbol is a very, you know, famous Egyptian symbol where you have the scarab beetle uh, holding the sun between his two forearms, okay? And there's this um, scarab beetle pushing this ball of dung. And I'm going to go into what all this means. 
in mythology. Okay, so Kepri, um, he represents the rising or morning sun. By extension, he can also represent creation and the renewal of life. And he has the scarab head, right? He has the beetle head. Kepri is derived uh, from the Egyptian language verb, I think that's a HPR, meaning to develop, coming into being or create. The god was connected to and often depicted as a scarab beetle. Okay, so there you go. And then young dung beetles have been laid as eggs with, in the dung ball, emerged from a fully formed and thus um, were considered to have been created from nothing. So Egyptians believe that each day the sun will also be born from, or create from nothing in the same way that the beetle pushes large balls of dung around the ground. Um, the god and the scarab beetle represents creation and rebirth. Yeah, so some believe that Kepri um, was also um, tied to cancer. Okay, so cancer was the gate of men through which souls descended from heaven into human bodies or into creation. The god Kepri, he who has come into being, represents the scarab. It was believed that the dung beetle was the only male in gender and reproduced by depositing semen into the dung ball. The purpose of self-creation of the beetle represents Kefri, who creates himself out of nothing. Okay, so it's tying into cancer because of the meaning of a keeper. And I know I've seen this before, not just in this text, but that cancer, because of the shell and the beetle, it, it has the same association. Um, originally, it was the beetle. Okay. In, in astrology, the sign Cancer, along with the representation of summer solstice, also represents the moon. So, crabs are influenced by the phases of the moon and the tides which are governed by the moon. Cancer also re represents the mother. Yet, to my knowledge, it has not been identified with any particular mother in mythology. So, the six lower signs uh, typify incarnated life. But the beetle has further instruction for us. He observes that the, the beetle deposits its ball or eggs, rolls in the dung of earth for a space of 28 days, a lunar cycle, during which the moon passes through the small round of the 12 zodiac signs. But on the 29th day, the day of resurrection, according to the lunar markings, there occurs the baptism of the beetle. Okay, this casts his ball into the water. It opens to give birth to the young beetle. This immersion and baptism leads to the renewal of generation. So this is the whole thing of baptism in the water. It's about renewal. Okay, so Pata or Kepri, the lunar god, was always declared to be self-creation and never born. So he's not really the sun god. They try to make him into the sun god. Um, I think in some contexts, like rebirth is all to do about the sun, but it's, I think it's like a combination, you know, it's just, you have to merge the male and female. It's all to do with alchemy again, like merging, um, Hermes and Aphrodite, the hermaphrodite. It's always the same thing, but they try to get us to only worship the sun and, and not think about the moon at all. But you know, the lunar cycles, yeah, you know, are tied to the ocean. So, yeah, it's just like, whoa. Yeah, so I can't believe the dung beetle. They don't, you notice how they never mention that, <laughs> that it's tied to the lunar cycles? No, never, never mentioned in any other text. So here they're just saying the amulets of the scarab beetles are all tied into this god. Um, and then they had heart uh, scarabs, you know, and also the amulets are protecting mummies. So it's like after your death, they're a protection. Now, a lot of them, uh, the pottery, they use this tin glaze pottery called, a, it's not faience in its usual sense, tin glaze pottery. It is different from the enormous range of clay-based Egyptian uh, pottery. So this is, it's this glass, although it contains a major, major uh, constitutes of glass, silica, and lime, and no clay until later periods. The Egyptian faience is frequently used to survey ancient pottery. So this, this um, tin glaze on these scarabs, uh, beetles, um, reminds me 
of the color Tiffany blue, right? The Tiffany blue that um, uh, Jackie Kennedy wore and then Melania Trump in the inauguration. But in the end, the shell, your, your armor, uh, is to do with this beetle. Okay, so this beetle being Tiffany blue and it being like a glass glaze ties into the Meisner effect, which is the body becoming a superconductor and your DNA and your protein having to swap charges for the Cheshire charge for the Cheshire cat in Alice in Wonderland. Um, and this is, if you, you know, want to go research this, it's in the non oriental wormhole on Wikipedia. You can get in there and get into the whole Alice universe and all in case you uh, didn't catch that one video, I explained all this. But this is to do with your armor on um, and then you're able to uh, be able to make the Mobius jump. So this is all tying into the nature of the pearl, right? The pearl uh, is your armor, the mother of pearl. The mother of pearl it has the same color and it's also glaze. It's the shield. It's called Egyptian blue. Now this is saying that the sun god Ra okay, is talking about the dung beetle. So this is what I was saying. So the Egyptian god um, Capri, Ra as the rising sun. So see how they, they've taken it to be about the moon and cancer and diverted it to the sun. Interesting. But in the end, it all makes sense because the sun, you know, I think shoots off a CME that activates your DNA. Um, and then you end up becoming on the cardinal cross, which is ruled by the moon. So this is why I think it kind of gets mixed and transferred because it's the ascension has to do with the sun and the moon. Now, of course, these uh, crabs, turtles, or whatever, um, beetles, were always on the obelisks. Okay, so this post addresses the meaning of obelisk not as a phallus uh, symbol, but as a pillar of heaven. So it's like, you know, he's saying that it's the middle path. I still think it has to do with the harvest, and, you know, maybe it is the middle path as well. It can, it's, can be both, right? So he's saying that um, he realized that it was about astronomy and it was about the Cancer constellation. You know, so people are starting to catch on. And then, of course, there's other anthropologists saying that it's like um, the clock, um, you know, a sundial, which could, you know, has to do with, um, I've watched Freemasonry use this, just the, the stick and the string, and you end up starting your ge geometry, and you end up making the Vesica Pisces, which ends up making your pyramid triangle. Okay, so this, this also has, you know, huge importance as well. The history on the obelisk can go on and on, but, they, you know, they've moved a lot of them out of Egypt. There's one in London, New York, and Paris. I was told you about the Cleopatra needle. Um, now, the Dutch Golden Age painter um, placed an obelisk in the background of his 1655 painting, and he's selling grain. So, ah, yeah, there you go. It's the spica star, okay? It's the, it's the ear of wheat she has in her hand, uh, Virgo. That's the corn, okay? And that's what is, represents um, the spring triangle in August. It goes over Washington, which the Freemasons said in their historical video, that that spica star is the Washington Monument, so the obelisk. Okay? So it has to do with grain and food. Okay, <laughs> we're the food. Okay, if you don't want to be the food, you have to ascend. You have to alchemize. Simple as that. Be in bliss. This one saying here, the underlying of the traditional solar wing scarab to the top of the obelisk, you can read the name of the first name of Ramsey II. All these obelisks go back to Ramsey II. Now, I don't know if you guys have looked into the information how every single president, I think except two, all have bloodlines that go back to Ramsey II, okay? So, yeah, the whole thing about voting, mm, I don't know. From which the obelisk was, yeah, so it was erected. Entries, which are its titles, read Grand Master 
powerful in all countries, the king, the son of Tum, and intelligent son of Atum. The king is also called Lab by Tum and Ra, and this shows that the obelisk is directly from Heliopolis, the city of the sun, Ra. Okay, now Atum, you know, is most likely where Atum came from. Adam and Atum. Okay, so they're using all the same wording. Santos had mentioned that, and uh, I do think he's correct on that fact for sure. Okay, back to the video. At the end, there she is, um, the white, you know, goddess with the white wolf. I like this after they kind of transform and they shape shift, she's able to walk through a glass door. Okay, so this is like walking through the veil, which be would be like the Mobius strip jump, right? You go into the other world, the afterworld where, where everything's not upside down like in this world. And then they also um, have like um, sparkle glowing eyes. Uh, and then you can say, oh my God, this is creepy, you know, because I think they've got like pointy teeth, uh, their canine teeth. But the canine teeth being pointy represents the wolf again. Okay, so as vampires, the shape shifting is probably not really what we think it is. Okay, they've kind of done a sigh up on it. Then they show a picture of the moon again with the wolf and the woman. So this again would be Sirius, Isis, the Silver Gate, where the two eclipses cross the United States at the Silver Archway in St. Louis. Um, this is also where Trump is born. Trump is born in the Silver Gate between the horns of Taurus with the crab nebula. You start to see how... His birth is all part of this. It's not all what you think it is. We're in a pre-scripted matrix. Okay? This is what this reality, this realm is, to my understanding. It can't all be a coincidence. If, it, if you think it's all a coincidence, wow, you have a good imagination. Okay, because it's, it can, to me, there's too many things that all tie in. It's impossible at this point for my perception of reality. Uh, but again, they show the moon at the end of the video. And on the wolf, right at the last scene, there's this little thing on his back. It's got like one, two, three, four, five, six dots on it. But it, to me, it looks like a little cross. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys can figure out what it is. At first, I thought it was a frog, but then I'm like, no, it looks like a cross. But anyhow, that was my whole interpretation of her video. I hope I didn't ruin it for you guys. This I found really interesting, the Druid. The Celtic word for oak is Druer, and the name Druid comes from the combination of the word Druer and the word um, weed, weed, which means to know. Okay, so in Celtic countries, the Druids often worshipped in sacred um, oak groves, as uh, the celestial oak also symbolized the god uh, or male principle. The oak moon is the seventh moon, also known as the moon of strength, and is associated with the summer solstice um, in the he northern hemisphere and the winter solstice in the southern. The, this moon is dedicated to Janus, the two-faced god, for in his maturity the oak king looks in both directions of the year at once, and does, as does the sun. The word oak also means door in many languages, and this moon is known as the hinge of the year. And she says this in her video. She goes, I'm not unhinged. Okay, so I don't know if that was a reference, but I think the, um, the solstices are like the hinge, right? That's when they talk about uh, when the souls can go, you know, the Milky Way is right across the sky like a, like a dome. Um, on the solstices. It's really cool when you go and look at it um, outside. So this is the would be the the stairway to heaven and they believe the souls only can can go up back you know on these times of year. You're waiting for that time of year so your soul can leave. Um, that's an ancient mythology and I think a native culture. So anyhow I'm going to do the next video all about Osiris uh, and I'm going to tie it into the new date that I've uh, you know kind of been looking at I've been meditating on it I had lots of different dates I was thinking about them and meditating and I didn't want to put anything out there until I really felt 
Um, it all aligned um, mythologically and also numerology wise and then um, you know to do with the the, ast the ast ast astronomic cycles okay because we want to see that all the cycles are all matching to past history dates so I've been putting this giant puzzle together trying to figure out the date and, and I understand now why Juan O'Savan says Osiris's number is 17. And I'm not going to tell you today but I will share that with the next video and, uh, and and this was just kind of part of that video but then I put the video in there with it to just kind of give a segue into the Egyptian mythology and so the other video didn't get too long. So I know this is a bit long as well, but eh, trying to keep them a little shorter so you guys can uh, listen through them and not miss anything. So I hope you're all well. Let's try to stay in bliss. And, uh, you know, we've, I do think uh, we've got the summer to go through and uh, things are going to get more interesting in the fall. Okay, so don't panic, chill out, and just uh, work on yourself staying in a really healthy place. Don't forget to enjoy the six planet stellium today. All in Capricorn. Enki. It's the kingdom house with some cool numerology. 20210210. Bliss to you all.